Hello and welcome back to Making Number Sense Make Sense. Today I'm here to talk with you about the Wreck and Wreck. Have you ever seen one before? So a Wreck and Wreck is basically a tool that is great for lots of different things when working with kindergarten, first grade, second grade, in moving past counting things one by one and starting to unitize, starting to subitize, and developing more sophisticated counting strategies. So let's learn about it. So a Wreck and Wreck has two rods with 10 beads each, five red and five white. And the setup of the Wreck and Wreck with the 10 and 10 and five and five really helps students with a lot of things that we need to be able to be really sophisticated counters and move from counting to addition and subtraction strategies on and on and on. When introducing a Wreck and Wreck to my kindergartners, I usually like to wait a little bit until they've had a lot of practice counting and really developing their counting number sequence and one-to-one -one correspondence before we move on to a Wreck and Wreck. How do you introduce it to your students? Well, I usually start by asking them what they notice about it, that there's 20 beads, that there's five and five, there's some on the top and some on the bottom, and very important when using any math tool, I wanna to give them a chance to really play with it, shake it, see what it feels like, move the beads around before it becomes a tool, their, 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 play, their play out of it, though we still have lots of fun games to play with it. After I've introduced it, I like to try and have them show me different numbers. Like, oh, can you show me this number? Can you show me this number? And tell me what they notice about when we move the numbers around. What it looks like, what it feels like, what the other side looks like that is not in play, all those different things. So to use a Wreck and Wreck, I usually like to remember the, the rhyme white on the right. So the white beads belong on the right side and that is the zero position um, or starting position. And then from there, the kids slide the beads over. Now, like I said, they can slide one by one, but the benefit of a Wreck and Wreck is you're really trying to get them to see, instead of seeing like one, two, three, four, five, actually get them to see five and swipe them all at one time so they can start to think of numbers as bigger chunks versus one by one. The Math Resource Learning Center has a great PDF about Wreck and Wrecks and how to introduce them and some activities and lessons you could do with them, and I will have that link for you in the description below. Now, when students are using the Wreck and Wreck, what you're really looking for is if they can start to group numbers together. So instead of moving over seven, one at a time, they would do five, and six, seven, or if they can just push seven along the whole time. Something that'll really help with that is if they get to use them a lot a lot of visuals, a lot of being able to play with it and see it and start to remember what those numbers look like or supertizing, which is one of the great things about a Wreck and Wreck. Similar to a 10 frame that you can supertize that way, it's a different way to see numbers, a different way to play with them, and a different way to learn to supertize or see numbers without counting. Because of the structure of the Wreck and Wreck with five red and five white beads all together making 10, it really helps to support an anchor to five and an anchor to 10 when kids are counting and eventually using addition and subtraction strategies. So they can think of those friendly numbers and then from there build on or build backwards from it. Something else that Rec and Recs are really great for is learning about doubles and near doubles and what they might look like. If your question was eight plus eight and they put eight on the top and eight on the bottom, they might start to see that eight is also the same as 10. Eight plus eight is also the same as 10 plus six is also the same as 10 on the top and six on the bottom. There's lots of different ways that they could see it, which helps them with their fact fluency and applying their previous knowledge to new problems, which is what we want. We want to develop their number sense so that they can approach any problem that they might have. Building off of the doubles and near doubles, it's also really helpful to see the different ways that kids think about numbers and think about solving problems. A lot of times in math, people are pigeonholed into thinking there's only one way to do everything, but that's just simply not true. And lots of kids, depending on their level and how familiar they are with the Wreck and Wreck, might help them change or think about things in a different way. Working with partners, working without partners, and just seeing things differently. For example, if you are doing nine plus six, some students might need to make the nine on the top row and nine on the bottom row to figure out what that was. Whereas others might be able to start compensating, understanding that nine and 10 are really close. So instead of moving nine and six, they might move 10 and five and start to develop more sophisticated counting strategies and addition and subtraction strategies moving into first grade, continuing into second grade. We've talked about what a Wreck and Wreck is. 
how to introduce it, and the benefits of using Eureka Rec, Rec in your classroom. Let's dive into some full group, small group, center activities that you can use Rec and Recs for. So the first one kind of goes along with subitizing is quick images. To play quick images, you will flash a number really quickly, and then the students either have to think about in their head what that might look like, or build that number on a Rec and Rec, or whatever you're using for subitizing. So in this case, we would be using the Rec and Rec cards or your own Rec and Rec and show them for three to five seconds, put it down and see if they can recreate or figure out in their head the number that you showed. The next activity could be done small group or full group, and it's called one push, two pushes. So like I said before, the Rec and Rec is really great about developing strategies that are beyond just counting from one, so with one push, two pushes, you would give your students a number, for example, seven, and have them think about how they might make a seven on their rec and rec in the least number of pushes. So just one push to make the number seven. So they might discuss like, oh, well, you might have to move it like this. Or some people might, some students might say, oh, I just know five and two is seven. So I'm just going to have two white beads and move them over. But other students might be like, oh, well, let's see, I need five, six, seven. Or some might still have to count it out in their head to know how many to move over in just one push. And then two pushes would be in a, for a double digit number. So from 11 to 20, like how can you make the number 12 in just two pushes? So for that one, you would try to move 10 and two. The next game is something that you can do as a math center or math station. It's called pick, build, and cover. So the way that you play pick, build, and cover is you pick a rec and rec card, you build it on your um, rec and rec, and then find that number on your counting mat. And I'll have a link to that below that you can use in your classroom. The next game is called spin and slide. So for this one, they'll have a spinner that has the rec and recs on it, either one to 10 or 11 to 20, depending on their um, counting level and they would spin whatever number it is and then figure out how they would slide to make their rec and rec match the number. And if you want to make it a little more challenging, instead of giving a picture of the rec and rec, you can just do numerals and then they have to figure out what that numeral would look like instead of doing a direct match. And the next two games you can access for free in the link in the description. The first one is called Spin, Count, and Cover. So for this one, the students have a spinner and they will spin it and see what number they get and whatever number they get, numeral they get, they'll have to find that number on their um, counting mat and cover it with whatever you might have in your classroom. And then they keep going until they finish the board. And that one also has the version for one to 10 and 11 to 20. The last game is called How Many Combinations Can You Find? And this one has more to do with composing and decomposing numbers. So you would either give your students the number that they're working on or they could roll a dice, whatever they need, to figure out which number they're gonna be working with. So for example, if they're working with the number five, the part they would work with a partner or on their own to figure out how many different ways they can make a five on their rec and rec. So you could have one student be the top and one student be the bottom, or you can have them just work it out, see if they could figure it out together and record their answers that they got on the recording sheet, which like I said, is available in the link in the description. That was a lot of information about Rec and Recs and I hope that you found it helpful. If you're looking for a digital version of a Rec and Rec, I will have that link down below that you can access for free, a zero to 20 Rec and Rec and a zero to 100 Rec and Rec that you'll be able to use. And again, don't forget to grab your free products in the link in the description and there'll also be a blog post that goes with this out as well if you'd like to see everything right now. I hope that you found this helpful. Make sure to subscribe for more math videos and I will see you next time. Apart from my And to play quick images, you basically flash something for 